So I got a brand new offer from Verve slash Crunchyroll. If you click the link down in the description, you can get not 7, not 15, but 30. That's right, a month free of Verve. And now on Verve, you have new episodes of Last Man, you have shows from CISO, and you can watch Dragon Ball Super in pristine high definition quality on all your devices. This is a limited time offer. Take advantage of it now. The link is down below. All right, guys, so I've got a whole bunch of programming notes I want to give you before we get into the meat of this review. Number one, I'm sure most of you already know, but I want to remind you, there will not be a Dragon Ball Super next week. Instead, Fuji TV is going to air the one-hour One Piece special, which is going to be two episodes of One Piece, you know, back-to-back. That is coming up next week, but the week after, Dragon Ball Super will return with two episodes back-to-back, which is going to be the autumn television special which well without going into spoilers is going to have a lot of very important events go on in that special so just remember there's no super next week but the week after it comes back with two episodes all right now if you are a subscriber to geekdom 101 which if you're not punch that button hit the bell uh next week i'm still going to be uploading tons of content including most likely next saturday i don't know of the time yet but i will be doing a special charity stream with a lot of special guests Um, And all the proceeds from the stream, all the Super Chat donations are going to be going directly to victims of Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria. So I will be doing a charity stream. We'll be talking about Super. We'll be having a good time. We'll be singing songs. Join us on that stream. Your donations will go directly to the Red Cross. I think it'll be the Red Cross. I'll let you know more details during the stream. But it's going to go to them. So definitely throw that out there. I've never done one of those before. So just letting you know. Also, next week on October the 1st, October 1st, I will drop my biggest video I've ever done. It's 35 minutes long. The history of Dragon Ball Z on Cartoon Network. The entire history of DBZ on Toonami. 35 minute video that I edited and I worked really hard on for you guys. So instead of Super next week, you're at least going to get that. It's like a mini documentary, so I really hope you guys enjoy that. So that's coming up next week and I hope you guys enjoy that. Plus, of course, I'll have content going up during the week as well. Geekdom 101 will not take a week off, even if Super takes a week off. You know what I'm saying? So, speaking of Dragon Ball Super, let's talk about Dragon Ball Super episode 108. Furiza to Forosto, Majuaru Acne, which translates to Frieza and Frost, intersecting evil intentions. Last week, Frost got the spotlight. This week, Frost and Frieza get the spotlight. The Universe 6 and Universe 7 tyrants, and they seem to have sinister motives. So I'm going to tell you before I go any further in this review, I am a Frieza fan. I mean, I've always been a Frieza fan. He is my favorite character, him and Shampa. And I like other characters too, like Vegeta and Gohan, but Frieza is my all-time favorite character in Dragon Ball. So I'm not going to tell you that I'm biased, but anything with Frieza, I tend to like. All right. Well, Resurrection F wasn't that good, especially the arc, but... I was waiting for this episode. Uh, I know a lot of you guys were kind of wondering when Vegeta and Frieza would get their episodes in Gohan. Well, we're seeing it now. You know, last week Vegeta had the spotlight. This week Gohan has the spotlight with Frieza. So it's all coming to fruition. So the other thing about this episode, before we get into the Frieza stuff, we're going to get into that here in a minute, is uh, there was a goku Ribrian fight that was going on sort of in the background. The, it wasn't a major focus of the episode. At the very beginning of the episode and at the very end of the episode, they saw or we saw a little bit of this goku Ribrian fight. They play the awesome some Sumitomo Ribrian music, which I always love. Uh, Ribrian, Ribrian wants to beat Goku with the power of love. She fires these like heart blasts, and Goku is, you know, he's got his hands full here with the power of love. So it's interesting though, because as this is going on, there's a little like montage, I guess you can call it, where you're getting commentary from the gods of destruction, including the ones that are exempt, the ones that are not going to be fighting. And the, the general gist of it was more so that. They're impressed by the other universes, the lower-ranked universes, and even though their universes are lower-ranked, they're still entertaining to watch is kind of what I took from that discussion. So the Goku versus Ribrian fight is going to continue into the next episode, which is, as I said, the special. So that fight's still going on. Elsewhere, we have Gohan, and he's fighting the Universe 4 robot Boraretta. It's hard to say his name, but um, the... When you see him, you'll know what I'm talking about. You've seen the episode, the guy with the big eyes or whatever. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that robot from Dragon Ball Z Episode 9 that got stuck in the mountain with Gohan way, way back in DBZ. Kind of reminds me of him a little bit with the big eyes. And then Gohan's retreating away from the robot, 
and he gets jumped by the Universe 2 yard drag Jimmy's. So Gohan goes face to face with him. And uh, Jimmy's teleportation, which is, of course, the instantaneous movement, the Shunkan Ido teleportation, is giving Gohan trouble. Jimmy's has mastered this technique. Uh, but, of course, it's a yard rat technique. So he has mastered it. It's not really stated if the yard rats are born with this technique. It wasn't actually said and if it was said i missed it i apologize for that but it is something that they i I suppose just easily master that we need more information on this yard rat lore to really see what's going on so jimmy's pretty much teleports around and attacks gohan from you know all over all kinds of different directions and angles and um you know he's about to blast gohan but then suddenly frieza shows up making an awesome entrance and i just want to say I really love Ryusei Nakao's performance in this episode as Frieza. I sincerely hope that Chris Ayers is healthy enough so that he can come back and do these episodes, you know, next year when they end up airing on TV on Cartoon Network. It should be next year when they air on Toonami. Um, but if not, Damon Mills will do it, and I'm sure he'll do a great job. It's just there's so much good Frieza, like, boasting and laughing. It's just going to be a lot of fun to watch dubbed as well as sub too. Ryusei Nakao is the man. Now, one thing I want to talk about real quick is having Roshi on the sidelines. You know, one of the good things that I didn't even think about last week about Roshi being eliminated from the tournament is that now we have Roshi on the sidelines with Krillin, with Tenshinhan, with Beerus, and with Whis, and they can kind of give their commentary. So, you know, we hear... Roshi talking about the fights, he's watching the fights, and remember, Roshi has years and years of experience, so when you watch the Tournament of Power now, you've got him as a special guest commentator, and I like that, because he's always going to give some insight to what's going on, he does talk about the teleportation being mastered, so they have this discussion also about trust, and you know, Frieza came to rescue Gohan, and the whole thing is, you know, can we trust him? Because this dude is evil, and he always has been. He has no connection to Gohan. He just wants to survive by himself. Um, but is he planning something sinister? So then they talk about a very interesting line was said here. Um, they talk about how, you know, the last surviving warrior would get a wish with the Super Dragon Balls, and that could very well be Frieza. We states that the Super Dragon Balls could kill gods. Now... We kind of suspected this, but this is the first time they've actually made it explicitly clear. I'm going to rewatch the episode later tonight, and you know I'm going to watch it again and really kind of take notes. And we may do, don't know for sure, may do a separate video on just this topic because the idea of Weiss, you have to understand how the writing for this show works. The fact that Weiss told us that the Super Dragon Balls can kill gods, that to me sounds like foreshadowing. That to me sounds like there's going to be something going on in the future that's going to involve somebody either killing a god or potentially trying to kill a god. Maybe he thinks that Frieza will get the Super Super Dragon Balls and wind up wishing for Zeno to disappear, but they don't actually state, from what I heard, they don't actually state what level of God, like, you know what I mean, like, they don't state if the Super Dragon Balls can actually take Zeno out, Grand Priest, maybe, the Angels, Gods of Destruction, Supreme Kai's, absolutely, but can the Super Dragon Balls do the, the power of the Super Dragon Ball supersede Zeno. I think that's going to be a major plot thread going forward. I think you all should remember that in the back of your head that they're not just giving this clue to us for nothing. There's something that's going to happen in the future. So back to the fighting here. Jimmy's attacks Gohan, but Frieza puts an end to that mess. Um, Frieza, it's actually pretty interesting. Jimmy's tries to get the jump on Frieza, but Frieza just, you know, Bats him away with his tail, and then he starts to crush this dude. I mean, he even busts out the classic uh, Dragon Ball Z Frieza uh, move from Namek where he chokes Jimmy's with his tail while punching him in the ribs. Almost exactly like how he did the Vegeta on Namek, if you remember when he was just pummeling the dude. Same exact move. Love that move. So Frieza says sayonara, and Gohan screams at him because he doesn't want him to kill because if you kill, you get DQ'd. Frieza's like, don't worry about it. You know, I didn't kill him. He just kind of knocked him out, and then he boots him out. So the Universe 2 Yard Rat has been eliminated. Frieza has eliminated the Yard Rat. And Frieza, of course, taunts Gohan, telling him that, well, if you weren't goofing off so much, you would have been able to win this fight. Pretty much that's what he tells him. Uh, And then Frost shows up, and he's like, well done, senpai. So... You know, Champa, you know, starts to scream or whatever, and he's worried that Frost and Frieza might fight, but 
really, he's there to fight Gohan. Because remember, his thing is that he wants to take out Universe 7. So they have this interesting little flashback of a discussion between Frost and Frieza. These two evil bastards are now bros. Frost and Frieza have teamed up because they both hate Saiyans. And their plan is, let's take everybody else out, and then we'll be the last two standing. And the idea behind this is that when the time limit on the Tournament of Power expires... If there's two of them there and they're both still in the tournament, Zeno will spare both of them and their respective universes. That's the idea that these guys are, you know, kind of going by. So then we pretty much get a Gohan Frieza fight. And Frieza attacks Gohan. Gohan's blocking. Frieza's laughing. He hits Gohan with a huge front front kick right to the face. Then he spears him, which I thought was awesome. Gohan powers up. He goes to Ultimate Gohan. He's had enough. Makes a comeback on Frieza. Very entertaining stuff. Nails Frieza in the face with a big right hand. Gohan, you know, p- doing very well right now. Frieza's like, oh, okay, then I'll get serious too. And he becomes Golden Frieza. They play the haunting Frieza music. Sumitomo... Again, bringing it with this arc, some of the best music he's done. Really, Sumitomo was kind of not very good in the first three arcs, in my opinion. It wasn't until the Trunks arc that I think Sumitomo really started to nail some great themes. So, Sumitomo does a great job here using that classic, you know, Golden Frieza theme. He becomes Golden Frieza, and we have Golden Frieza versus Ultimate Gohan. Who would have thunk it, right? Who would have thunk that one? So... Frost is there watching. He's got a key blast ready just to help out Frieza. Frieza nails Gohan with a huge kick to the back of the head and Gohan goes down. So even ultimate Gohan is not enough for Golden Frieza. So then Frost is watching all this, right? And he's impressed and, you know, Frieza and Frost are talking and he's like, okay... You know, this is awesome because he's never seen Golden Frieza before. He's like, oh, you know, I want to do that. Frieza's like, well, you can get stronger too. He's like, maybe not to this level, but try this. And he goes 100%, which is when he gets really, really buff. So Frost is like, oh, that? I can do that too. So we see Frost go 100%. So now we know that Frost, maybe not Golden Frost, but he can do 100% Frost. He gets really big and ripped and jacked. And Frieza smiles And I'm paraphrasing here, but he pretty much says, hey, one more piece of advice, buddy. Don't trust anyone. He blasts Frost in the face. Frost gets eliminated. He is double-crossed. Frost has been double-crossed. Frieza has betrayed Frost. And I'm going to say it. I usually don't toot my own horn here, but I called it last week. I called it the week before the Splores came out. I am a great prognosticator. I told you that Frost was not really going to team up with, uh, well, I'm sorry, that Frieza was not really going to team up with Frost, and it was all going to be a setup to throw Frost out, and that's exactly what happened. Frieza, you, you know, Frost might be a sinister dude, but there's only one Frieza, you know what I'm saying? This guy's the real OG of the imperialistic universe rulers or whatever. So pretty much what they reveal is, you know, Frost is on the sidelines and he's pissed. He's like, you know, I can't believe I got double cross. Turns out that Frieza only pretended to knock Gohan out. His last blast or his last attack was not really that powerful. And I guess Gohan knew it. It was all a trick. And Frost is so mad, he actually wants to attack Frieza. But the Omni King say, nope, nope, you... You can't attack someone if you've been eliminated, and so Frost pretty much cucks to them. Um, So, yeah, I thought this was very characteristic of Frieza, because think about it logically. Even though Frieza might be a bad guy, and even though Frieza and Frost might both hate Saiyans, this is about universal survival, and can Frieza really trust Frost? I think Frieza's mentality is, I would rather, and this is kind of good storytelling in my opinion. This makes sense, guys. Frieza's mentality is, I would rather be aligned with the enemy that I hate but the enemy that I know versus the enemy that I don't know and Frieza like it or not has no connection with universe 6 at all he has no connection with them but he does have a connection with Goku with Vegeta and with Gohan because of the constant battles they've had throughout the years and like I said many episodes ago you gotta feel me on this one guys Frieza has a respect for Goku. He doesn't like him. He hates him. He's jealous of him. He hates the Saiyans. He hates the fact that he got overthrown. All that stuff is true. He hates the fact that they killed him. All that stuff, it's all true. But there's a respect there because, you know, when when two men fight, even though this is an animated series, it's still true to life here. 
there's something about like if you hate someone, if you go out there and you fight the dude, let's say you fight on the streets and then you guys both live to survive, there's a respect there. Like you might not like the dude, but he's earned your respect because he had the balls to fight you. That's the way that this is being written and I really, really like that. I really, really like it. The question is now, can they trust Frieza? Is this a triple cross? Is he really just setting them up? We'll find out in the future. Frieza does tell Gohan that they have to work together from now on because this is not going to be easy. Um, and then elsewhere, like I said in the beginning of the episode or at the beginning of the review, Goku and Red Brand are still fighting. Next week, folks, Goku versus Jiren begins, and we are going to see, it's in the next episode preview, the Genki Dama, the spirit bomb. Goku pulls one out. Let's see how it affects Jiren. Let's see what happens. No, nothing about the new form yet. And in the next episode preview... But it's there. Not next week. Excuse me. The week after. Once again, no Dragon Ball Super next week. I will most likely be doing a stream Saturday night. Make sure you check the channel that day. Check your subscription box so you know when the stream comes up. Most likely be streaming for Hurricane Irma victims. Doing a charity stream next week. As well as uh, Sunday, we have the huge video that I worked on, which is the history of Dragon Ball Z on Toonami. 35-minute video. Um, just huge stuff I worked on. I, I think you guys are going to like it, especially if you like nostalgia, because it's really going to tickle that. And we'll be back in two weeks, of course, for Dragon Ball Super, um, the TV special, the one-hour special. Not next week, the week after. There's no Super next week. I keep saying it because people keep forgetting. No Super next week. Um, but still lots of content here on the channel, and we're going to have more details on that special coming up this week based on some leaks that I think are going to come out. So, again, this is the place to be, Geekdom 101. I thank you for being here as always. Let me know your thoughts on this episode. And like always, I always want to talk about my sponsor, Verve. You can watch Dragon Ball Super on there. You can watch Yu Yu Hakusho on there. You can watch Akira on there. There are tons of movies and also non-anime content on there. They are the sponsors of the Geekdom 101 Super Reviews. Elation, Crunchyroll, Verve, all the same company. A good company. They put out good stuff, and I want you guys to check them out. Get 30 free days. Thank you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for my next episode preview. Breakdown. And I'll talk to y'all then.